Well, it's a great pleasure to have here with us uh, Matthias Pincher and Hervé Boutry, uh, both of Ensemble Intercontemporain. Almost. You did with, very well. Uh, thank you, thank you. I've been trying for a year. <laughs> so, uh, Matthias is a composer and a conductor, and Hervé is the director general of uh, the Ensemble. And uh, we're very pleased to, to have them here in Washington for the DC debut of, of the Ensemble, and also to share some of our collections with Matthias and with Hervé. Um, we're going to start off with some Schoenberg manuscripts, um, and those came to us largely through a, a donation by Mrs. Gertrude Clark Whittall, who also donated the library's Stradivari instrument collection. And uh, later on, um, the library also commissioned several Schoenberg works, including the third and fourth string quartets. So we're actually going to start off now with the second string quartet manuscript, and we'll let you dig in and see what you think. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I have so much respect for this because also we have the survival of Warsaw here. As you know, Nick, uh, Schoenberg is somehow one of the major sources for everything that we still need now mm -hmm. nowadays. And he has so much to find. The contemporary, yeah, and this, all this music goes like a hundred years back and, and even more, and it has completely shaken mm -hmm. the world. And we're still feeling the trembling of yeah. all the, the shaking. And um, I can actually not believe that I'm touching all this. Yeah, thing. go ahead. I, I won't <laughs> interfere. <laughs> you do this every day. I know, we're very lucky. Um, so the... Well, I'll give you a moment with that. <laughs> the, the sort of lore behind um, this manuscript and some of the other ones is that uh, when Schoenberg had arrived in the United States, he was struggling financially, and he caught wind that uh, Mrs. Whittall was willing to purchase his manuscripts in order to donate to the library, do, donate them to the library, um, and that is how these arrived here. I'm always impressed by even if I may consider Schoenberg still as a still as a contemporary composer that you decide to write with ink on paper because you cannot mm -hmm. revise it. I mean you yeah. can do stuff to it like here, you scratch it out. But you have to go through some major effort to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like it's it's like I always have that analogy with like um Japanese calligraphy where you decide upon something, you perform that action and you cannot revise it mm -hmm. unless you kinda of go back. It's like yeah. ink on paper. Done. Done. Yeah. And uh, obviously you can do that, but um, <laughs> wow, it's incredible. I'm touching the right mm -hmm. here. So it looks like there's some red pencil additions and markings. Yeah. yeah. See the flow. I mean, the Schoenberg is still like so talking about the style, so connected to the late Brahms. You know, you see very classical. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's like you have and now here's in three four, but you have a yeah, lot of eight. six eight nine eight twi twelve eight bars, mm -hmm. uh, where this is coming directly from from Brahms. The late Brahms is all has that one two three whatever, four five six mm -hmm. seven eight nine eleven twelve, but uh, it, you see you see. A flow, and you don't only see it because there's all those slurs. But you, you know, like he does even that. I do that too as a composer. You have like two notes, bum, <laughs> bum, bum. So the notes are not mm -hmm. slurred, but he puts a slur on top to show the phrasing. A staccato tenuto. Uh, it it's a like staccato <laughs> yeah. tenuto. It, 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 it's what does it mean? It means espressivo. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean either <laughs> short or long, but it shows a duration. Direction. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> That is advanced composing. Yeah, hey, who knew? <laughs> I would say. So have either of you seen Schoenberg manuscripts before like this? Um, I have, well, certainly I didn't touch any, yeah. but uh, no, I, I, I haven't. Let's see where we're, do we have all, we have all of it, yeah? yeah. Gestures. It already really signifies the, the late Schoenberg. And mm -hmm. the Vatum is full of those. Yeah, that, that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that. It's a very Schoenberg ish. You just gave yeah. us a good segue to the next thing we're going to throw at you. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Yeah, and then that, that woman is just like, oh. <laughs> What's written here? Flüchtig. Litanei? Litanei, yeah. But Stefan Georg. Stefan Georg, yeah. Mm. Not the greatest handwriting with text. And the small bits. Well, oh, it's, the, it's the kind it's of a sut it's we call it the Sutalin. Um, it's a t typical German. It's a typical, uh, very, uh, like what my, my, my most gothic uh, way my, of. My, my, oh, my yeah. grandmother would have, well, not even more even, but it's it was the, the type of writing mm -hmm. at, at that time. So I think it's called Sutalin. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, he's going through changes, but oh, yeah. am I correct that this is not white and dark? He just has to scrape it basically yeah. off. Yeah, and like here you can see he did something. Yeah. Wow, there we go. You know, all of a sudden, <laughs> completely different quality. Yeah. Speed in the writing. It's written fast. Is there anything from just this cursory glance that you would gain from this um, in preparing a performance or coaching a performance separately from the published editions now? To be totally honest, no, because it, it's all in the notes itself very much. And mm -hmm. it's not, I would say in that particular case, I mean, we probably have other, other examples. Um, seeing it does not enhance from what I already know about mm -hmm. it. Um, but you see, belebte, like more moving forward, and mm -hmm. all these gestures, who, who he describes as flüchtig, like fugir, how would you say that, like um, eerie, mm -hmm. um, en passant. You, you see that in the style. That, that's something I actually like. He has this very old fashioned way of how to notate harmonics. He always gives you the pitch on top. <laughs> um, it's a very Schoenberg thing. And it even seems like he has added the voice maybe later here, you know? This is like mm -hmm. in a different mm -hmm. kind of ink. So he had, he had the instruments first, the harmonic texture, and then yeah. he probably would put the melody on, on top. Look, this is like very speedy writing. Mm -hmm. Very. And how a great expressionist, how people have decided to call him, is aiming for more crescendo here. <laughs> Forte, Forte wouldn't just do. So he needs to, yeah. Barry mm. Schoenberg. There he is. The late Schoenberg. You know, also all these things are added, like the etwas lang. So it's a very Viennese thing. It's yeah. like Mahler, like do this, but don't. You know, it's just like little moving forward, but not too much. Mm -hmm. Or just hold it back, but also not too much. Yeah. It's, it's always, there's always that little, you know, restriction because you give an indication, but you take it back at mm -hmm. the same time. And that's the, this ambiguity that a lot of Viennese music has. Yeah. Schubert has it already. Because you can really do major harm to to Schubert if you push it too far to one direction. Mm -hmm. You have to find, if you play too fast, it, it's destroyed. Yeah. Right? Schubert is very fragile. Well, what I personally, I find a little shocking even that like a composer would just you know, violently change something in the score, just mm -hmm. not, not try to disguise it, but just go right mm -hmm. in with your red crayon yeah, yeah. and just, oh, then you just take it out. Do you ever do that? No. No, <laughs> no, no, because you know, I just I just erase it all. Mm -hmm. just, I mean, people are printing my music anyway, yeah. so there's no need. I could cross it out or do whatever I wanted, but I I take great pride in really um, leaving something on the paper that 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 tells about the aura and the style and the mm -hmm. the flow. Mm -hmm. Also, I was wondering wh why does he put the the swell on top? here and but underneath here it's interesting because I think if you would follow the the rules of an engraver if like something is beyond the second line of the staff yeah the, the, all the indications dot or whatever it be it needs to be on top of the knot yeah sure Merrick. 
again, look, it's like a completely different language yeah. in the writing even, mm -hmm. you know? It's very emotional music. It's not consistent, yeah? Honest somehow then. Mm. There's that chord. And there's that A sharp, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing to just be aware of as we pull out the Edvard uh, score is that in the about ten years earlier in the Verklärte Nacht, he actually sews in the changes that he wants quite carefully on top of. And if you look very carefully underneath, you can see what was originally there. Mm -hmm. But uh, his method of amending changes over the course of time. We have in uh, some of the Berg manuscripts that we have these little correction bits that he pasted in falling off because the glue's not holding anymore, which is kind of funny. So this, I believe, is some sketches, right? Uh, or draft of Evarto. Um, it's like a vocal score, yeah? yeah? Yeah, looks like there's some description underneath. This, I think, was a re recent acquisition, yeah. yeah. Oh, so he... He might even have started with a vocal score and then orchestrated it. No, I doubt that. I doubt that. He had the score first and then he 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 did this himself, mm. like the vocal score. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure mm. either. There's very interesting differences in ink that you can see right off the bat. Again, the the, the character of the handwriting is very different from what we just saw. Yeah. see the complexity of the harmonies. If you look at the score, it anyway looks complex, but if you see it like harmonically reduced mm -hmm. into uh, three staffs, you really understand why that music is so rich. It is complex, yeah. <laughs> even only harmonically. I know, he had some over here too. He had yeah. it too. We're all, we all, we all, all, all the same. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee, red wine, mm. tears. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is nine, eight bars. It's all over. Schoenbeck's Wartung is one of the absolute hardest pieces to conduct mm. ever uh -huh. in the repertoire. Have you done it yet with? I've done it many yeah. times. Well, many times. I've done it maybe like five or six times. Yeah. And it, 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 it is challenging. Because it sounds very free and flowing, and mm -hmm. you don't, which is a good thing. You don't hear the complexity. It's like with Boulez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is in, extremely complex in how it's constructed, but it's aiming for a natural flow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very dense. It's very dense, yeah. yeah. But is uh, Moses not more, even more difficult because it's longer, probably? It's longer. It's also very, very difficult. Yeah. Mm. Do you find, um, like when you perform, sh perform Schoenberg in Paris versus the US versus Germany, is, is there a big difference in the reception from the audience? Or would it just depend on the city? It really, it really depends upon how, I mean, this music is, is very intense. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people are still scared of Schoenberg, like, oh God, Schoenberg, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But that music is longing for great simplicity in, 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 the, in the singing. And if you really perform, if you take it to that, that's what we, in, in a good hour when we play, it's not Schoenberg, but the Berg Kammer Concert, the mm -hmm. Chamber Concert, which is one of the most, most complex pieces ever, ever written. What we, what we do is we, we rehearse it, we set it all up, we do it as long as we need to then take a step back and allow the music to flow. Mm -hmm. And if you find that quality in the music making, what we naturally have with Brahms or Beethoven, then I think the music can translate itself very easily to a public. And yeah. It doesn't matter if that's here in DC or in Baltimore or in Manchester <laughs> or in Sydney. It's, yeah. uh, it's music that, that, that is conceived through a great sense for, for color and flow. It's Viennese music. It mm -hmm. does flow. It does flow. And obviously with that kind of expressionistic style, the flow is even enhanced or 
reinforced by stopping. I mean, the most significant moments in in, in Schoenberg is is the stopping when all of a sudden the silence becomes yeah. so charged. Yeah, that's something that maybe Schubert didn't have yet at that time because mm -hmm. it was not allowed. It was formally not doable to mm -hmm. all of a sudden stop. But when Schoenberg says something which is so rich and then he stops, wow! It's like when you say something, make a statement, then you take that, you yeah. enjoy that qu that silence after makes it even more more significant. You know, that harp note here. Are there stylistic elements in your own music that you directly trace back to being influenced by his music? Mm, well, I was, I mean, when I was very, very young in my, even before my, my 20s, like 18, 19, I studied a lot the Sechsstücke by, by Schoenberg mm -hmm. and the Drei Orchesterstücke by Adam Park and that language of that, that great orchestral canvas has definitely influenced me. Yeah. But also uh, Anton Weber and the six pieces of mm -hmm. orchestra. Like how you can condense something and maximize the expression by condensing. Um, that has strongly influenced my writing for sure. Absolutely. Great. And I think willingly or not willingly, we're all somehow the heritage of, of, of Schoenberg. Yeah. So life changing. Like the ensemble itself. Like the ensemble mm -hmm. itself. The ensemble has been very, very influenced by some works of this period. Wonderful. They are very. Again, look at that heterogeneity in, in like the in the writing. Yeah. yeah. So how often are you programming Schoenberg now with the ensemble? Very regularly. Yeah. Not but all. not enough. Not yeah. enough, yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know, it's we um, we, we just played the, the, the five pieces in, in like an arrangement for uh, a capacity so, that we for ensemble that we can play. And it's very difficult yeah. because every note needs to be perfectly shaped and perfectly blended and and what we right. mm. and, and it, it has it, it carries all the history on your shoulder. Yeah. It's not just mm. something that you play. Um, you need to really find the style. The, the, the style is like listening to everyone else and then mm. fitting in. Mm -hmm. And if we play m more complex or the really contemporary music, then in the first place you just look at your part and if you play your part and if you're alert, then there's a lot happening already. But with Schoenberg you need to take it a lot further because the style of how you add a vibrato or not is it has to come from a tradition and not just has to can, cannot be decided in the yeah. moment. It's, it's something that needs to be talked about. And yeah, what an ending! I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, for him. yeah, and it, you know, he, he, he was really conceiving it as also as a performance, it's a visual, it's theater. Yeah, it's not yes, just a piece for, 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 for a soprano. Yes, from the very beginning. But I, I guess, I can only guess, I guess that he wrote the score first and then he did this uh, piano reduction himself. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. But do, do you know, David? I don't know, yeah. but I, that's probably a good guess. Yeah. Because that, that piece is so, it's, it only lives in the, in the orchestration. It's, yeah. it's so determined by the colors that are the orchestration. It, I, I would, it, it needs, that need, the score needs to be first. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but no. it would be interesting to find out. <laughs> Survivor? <you>. Yes. <sighs> okay, sure. With the Shema Israel at the very end, and a kind of weirdish alliteration. So this was one of our commissions through the Kuzovitsky Foundation. This really is the autograph of the... Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe this? I can't. It is unbelievable. <sighs> yep. That. Pencil now. Oh, yeah. oh it's a vocal score too. Okay. Piano reaction, yeah? Piano score. Mm -hmm. Let's go right to the Shema. <laughs> accelerates and then it collapses to the Shema. And again, completely 
completely different personality of yeah. the handwriting again. Yeah. And it's it's almost opposite now. This is mainly pencil with uh, ink annotations. A few ink annotations. Yeah. And interesting also, obviously, the, the, the outlook mm -hmm. of the handwriting is very much altered by a very wide yeah. staff. You know, there's like basically music paper for kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Kotak a little bit, even. It's interesting, he, he's taking some of the O's. I mean, this is all as, we are hafta, not we or hafto. We are hafta as Adonai Elohecho. Elohecha, Bechulibacha, it's all A's, not O's. Interesting where he got that from. Could it be a. Uh, but, but here, honestly, looking at that, maybe that has been first, and then there yeah. comes the orchestration. Very hard to sing that. I bet. <laughs> to stay in tune because yeah. it's so chromatic. It's like uh, that big chorale in, uh, um, in Deafness and Chloe where they're singing mm -hmm. for a solid three and a half minutes without anyone adding really anything. So yeah. after they're done with it, they're half a pitch lower. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, then the, the orchestra picks up the same yeah. chord. Like, Oops, <laughs> what just happened? You know, and like it, this is also very, very yeah. hard because they get very little orientation to. Um, the orchestra. So I remember, like when when, yeah. when you can, when you perform in rehearsals, it's it's a big challenge to keep the pitch yeah. at where it should be. Do you notice the shifts between four forty and four forty two, depending on where you're conducting? It, it to be totally honest, I think it's more more determined by the acoustic itself mm -hmm. and by the style of articulating. Mm -hmm. But yes, it makes it makes a great difference in the brightness. Mm -hmm. But it's even more, even more determined by the acoustic sound. And now all of a sudden, it's all pen. Or it looks like it's pen on top of pencil too. You can kind of see there. Yes. But it's like you really. But, but why he didn't even? He didn't even change anything. Yeah. Like it's the same. He put there's the pencil underneath, and then maybe he was he super determined. The rest. <laughs> the rest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so confused about the O's. Could that be a? Dialect no. deal from where he grew up? It's, it's Levanecha, not Levonecho. Interesting. That's something I want to know. Yeah, okay, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David will probably find it first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just stick this back inside here. Yeah, that's not his handwriting. No. Uh, and he spelled Kusevitsky, curiously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> K-U-S-S. -S. Personal ideas about spelling. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this? This is... Which no, one? Now we're getting really serious. Yeah, let me see what it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is... Uh, Opus 130, Opus yes. Opus 130. So this is manuscript of the press. The press so, yeah, second one. Heartbeat. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the paper alone. So I can touch this? Yeah. <laughs> Don't break it. <laughs> we don't let everyone touch it, so you know. <laughs> No, that's yeah. just the, the mounting of it, yeah. So this is another purchase by Mrs. Whittle for the library. And uh, she purchased a huge amount of Beethoven, Brahms, Mendelssohn, Schubert and she manuscripts. Purchased, for example, that manuscript is coming where from? Like she purchased it from 
another collector, or is it going through auctions? Sure. I don't know the specifics on this one, but um, in general, the philanthropists who would give us stuff, they would purchase through auctions or, or collections or private sales and, um, and then gift to us. And there's since these people gave us these materials, the library has been involved in getting things at auction sometimes or having donors get things at auction for us. Um, and the tradition of collecting like this for the library began uh, mainly after World War I, and there were official delegations sent over to Europe to try and purchase up a lot of materials to bring back. You can see he like chewed something out there or something. The first day I came to work here, Opus 109 was sitting on the table when I opened the door, the manuscript. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Have I played it yeah. myself on the violin? No. no. <laughs> that would have been way too challenging for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is where we know all this uh, famous anecdote where he said, I don't care how you do it, you just. <laughs> A little tiny fleck of a, mm -hmm. of a note. <laughs> it's like he almost went back into the stems later, too. Yeah. You think he added the stems? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure someone's done a paper on it. No, but this is like maybe one not. that's like jip. Yeah. Jip. Jip. So, and I wonder here, is this also like scratched off and then written over? Looks like it. Yeah, scratched off and then he made it the E. What was it before? A G. Yeah. A G, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like a G. I mean, only the paper itself. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was an emotional musician. With absolutely, he would not, couldn't care any less of what it looks like. Yeah. It just needed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, there's no, no pride in making it pretty or anything, anything. No. It's just like, unfortunately, he has he has to document it by writing. Yeah. It Total contrast from Mendelssohn, which we'll see in a little bit. And it tells you something about the musical. I mean, yeah. especially that octet, which yeah. we're going to see, which is so immaculate, mm -hmm. beautifully, and. There's this great sophistication in yeah. the language, and it probably shows in the in the handwriting. How are we doing? Um, Ooh, we've got like seven minutes left. Okay, we've got a bunch to go. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have 22 million items in music, which is no sound, no video, no nothing. It's just sheet music, manuscripts, um, correspondence, personal papers, business documents, um, the nonfiction books, etc. Yeah. But also look at you know, the key signatures. He's, he's choosing to get the, that dark sound. Yeah. But then he puts the fast tempo against it. It's a very interesting for a composer. That's very interesting because you you take away brightness, mm -hmm. but you add it through speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is do you understand what I'm trying to say? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This. We'll see what it. Octet. Yeah, we Octet. Okay. We graduated to Mendelssohn. That's my absolute favorite yeah. pieces ever. It's one of one of the ten I would take to the island. Really? Oh, cool. Awesome. Is that Otello? No, no, no. Otello. <laughs> See? There is your 
And interesting that he writes it in Italian because Italian <laughs> has been the German musical language. Mm -hmm. It's like he was making an effort to make the half notes nice and bubbly and. <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> the Gestalt yeah. of this is just. And what's cool about many of the manuscripts like these um, is that they're digitized online. So if someone were to want to do in-depth work, they don't need to be here. They don't need to be here. Yeah. And if you want to perform from this, this effects only the score, you can. So here's another one happened. He took like a first viola line out. Yeah, he took it. Mendelssohn is in, whenever he revises something, mm -hmm. like especially with the Italian symphony, like the, the second version we have, he took so much out. Yeah. Wow. And other composers add mm -hmm. when they revise. <laughs> yeah. I find that very charming because I'm also, if I revise, I would dare to take out. Yeah. Look, and here, also with the spacing, you can you can sight read it as a conductor. Yeah, yeah. Conduct number yeah. from that because it gives you an idea about the, the spacing and the, mm -hmm. the definition of the time. Again, it seems incredible that I'm touching the manuscript, yeah. the handwriting of Mendelssohn. That he touched. <laughs> Anyhow, it includes like that's something very new that Mendelssohn included at the time is you, you really fold in the pizzicatos into that kind of architecture mm -hmm. even if it doesn't really it's it's the beginning of that orchestration in chamber music where you orchestrate the spirit of of a texture by adding different kinds of techniques pizzicato is not anymore like a, now we're all playing pizzicato because you don't even really hear that as picasso yeah. it's just like it, it lightens up mm -hmm. the texture it's orchestration mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I think it must have been a, a challenge because if you would sit with your pen on the paper for too long, it would just come through yep. the end because too much ink is absorbed yeah. by the paper. Yeah, you so, can kind of see it. See? Yeah. You know, when, whenever you just you, you take too much, if you have the pen sitting on the paper too long, it would just go through. Mm -hmm. It looks really perfect. Oh, yeah. It is yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot imagine that it is the, the original. Yeah, look at the little date peeking out at the bottom. On the, uh, <laughs> well, we're 1825. Oh, cool. <laughs> Once upon a time. Modesty. Sophistication. Yeah. Very sophisticated, yes. And elaborate. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn from these handwritten scores. Oh, when oh yeah. Composers now yeah. writing with computer. It, interesting. Very yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we we talked about it earlier because for me, I'm still one of those fossils, like the the dinosaurs who are, have always written with pencil though, never ink, mm -hmm. pencil on paper. And it it helped me a lot to never get you know tempted to have the computer yeah. generate something for yeah. you. So yes. what I what I cannot conceive is in listening in to ear it. will never come to the paper. Yeah. And if you look at my manuscripts, they are they look like a computer printed score. Yeah. And it doesn't take me more time. Mm -hmm. Like if I would work without rulers, so I'm even measuring out like the bar. Wow. So I'm distributing like let's say a half an inch for the first beat and so I'm really I wanna make I, I, it's very helpful for me to see the flow yeah. of the music, even in, in the manuscript. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very personal thing, because it's maybe sure. so informed with the conducting. Because yeah. I already care about what I need to see uh -huh. to be able to interpret it naturally. Does the does your publisher honor the spacing that you put? Pretty much. Yeah, that's Pretty cool. Much. Took me some... Yeah, I'm sure. Some, <laughs> you know, some, some time to really, not fight for it, but just to really help 
people to appreciate what it means if you sure. have a sense for space. Yeah. Because sometimes I, we, I play so many contemporary works and sometimes there's absolutely no spacing and it just you have to basically interpret or play against what you see yeah. mm -hmm. and that I find painful yes it it's I just painful mm -hmm. so here's another one of my favorites yes, Appalachian Spring there we go yeah so this is the piano score the manuscript we just played yeah. it yeah I'm sorry we couldn't have you do it here I know we had uh, we already had the Graham company booked for this spring to do it so this, of course, is one of our commissions, and uh, we have all the different versions of the score and manuscript that he did. And um, what's also cool is we ended up with the... And this one is protected. Yes, <laughs> yes, because we know they a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really care about that commission. Well, you know, it's why a lot of people know about us, so we'll, <laughs> we'll work it <laughs> while we can. Beethoven Opus 30, 1 1 30. That's one thing. But yeah. the Appalachian yeah, yeah. Spring piano score. Oh. <laughs> I think part of it is because we, we don't bring those up for many people, whereas this gets pulled out for the school groups all the time. Yeah. Um, what's neat about the, this commission and the other ballet commissions that we've done is that we have the Martha Graham collection as well. So we have, and most of the, the dance projects were for her company. Um, you can go into her papers and see all of her original d choreography annotations with the different drafts. and You have that here too. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's amazing to be able to just come here and get all the different sides of, of and is, is the encounter. Is it in front of the, of the score? It, does she have a sort of... Uh, no, she wrote it right into the, in a piano score. She had a, 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 a photocopy score. of the piano score. I wonder why he put the clarinet annotation in question. Right? Yeah, I wonder what it ended up like. It is clarinet. It is, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Again, look, even... In the 20th century, people had to scratch yeah. it off. <laughs> no. No, no. This is, yes. That was ink, yeah. No, but is this also scratched off or white not? That, that was no. I think it was there. scratched off. Scratched yeah, off. Yeah, you too. can see the yeah. hole there. Now we all have like, what, what do you call it in, in here? Tip X? You have Tip X too? White out? You call yeah. it white out. Yeah. White out. Yeah. <laughs> you call it Tip X. Tip X. I know you want yeah. Tip X. That's probably white from out. typewriter days. Yeah, because yeah. it's like the yeah. little, you know, white yeah. sheet that you just, and then you just press the key again and just, it basically mm -hmm. prints white on exactly the same Shade letter or, letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, that is some neat handwriting. Yeah. Jeez. It's like Ravel's. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the music is just so crystal clear. And mm -hmm. That's what makes it so hard. You hear everything, intonation, precision, the synchronization. It's not easy to play if you want to make it no, graceful yeah. and light. It's very, very challenging, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And it took me, mm. it took me a long time to appreciate it. And I, now I'm really, I'm madly in love with Copland. And I'm really standing by myself with that opinion, as a European, oh, they, they, yeah. they don't appreciate it yet at all. One of our colleagues who brought his collection and ended up with his cat after he passed away. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny. <laughs> dum, da, dum, da, dum. This is always never together. Nope. Dum, da, da, da. Why, why is no, that? I know. I don't know. It's like it's because of the six eight. Dum, da, dum, ba, dum, ba, They're like, ba, oh my god. Dum, da, 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 da. That's always. It's always a mess. Sometimes it's also played too slow. Yeah, look, he just chopped out a whole, general, yeah. whole piece here too. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> well, there's more where this all came from. <laughs> you know the story about how the name came about? No. So he didn't actually call it Appalachian Spring initially. It was originally called Ballet for Martha. And then Martha Graham said, oh, you know, which, it's... Which state is a subtitle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Martha Graham said, oh, well, it sounds like, you know, the Appalachian kind of mood and with the simple gifts theme, she kind of got there. And there was a, a, a poem that included the line th uh, that referenced the Appalachian Spring idea, and then it kind of stuck from there. And it was premiered here as a ballet. Yeah. So On the stage? the stage? Yeah, very small ballet. Yeah. She was alone. No, 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 with the, the preacher and some of the other people. Ensemble. Yeah. And the 30 musicians in the... In mini the, pit, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. mini pit because they removed the. the oh yeah, cloth. well the musician was down because down, so yeah. it down below is the pit, yeah. Incredible. So yeah. When the flutist looks at you, it's <laughs> <to play> the last <laughs> <last year. laughs> Cool. 
Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks oh, for in, in, in Cambridge in Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. It's all C major. It's like all the good shoe wheels in C major. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah.